here we are again, up in the uh, Trinity clock tower. Cloudy day, but very pleasant. And um, as usual, there's uh, not a soul in the college. It's all very quiet. Um, this time I've done the winding in good time, so I'm not out of breath. Uh, it's just struck three o'clock. The winding is all done. And that means that you can see that the weights are right up there. That's where they should be after winding. Um, but what I want to talk about today is um, the silencing of the bells. Because you heard the bells, it's, they struck um, three just then. Now, uh, it goes ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Boing, boing, boing. Now, that, that, the first one of those, boing, 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 is called the Trinity Strike, for whatever reason. And the second one is called the St. John's Strike. Boing, boing, boing. Apparently, St. John's couldn't afford bells, so we ring the bells for them. I don't, don't think that's the real story, but never mind. That story for another time. The thing is that in 1935, the question was asked, should the bells be silent from uh, midnight to, or oh, just after midnight to um, seven o'clock in the morning. Well, I was looking through the council minutes in the Wren Library, and I found some interesting stuff. So here is, here is a, a letter, a draft of a survey. So it says, please cross out one of the above, I am in favour of the proposal to silence the clock during part of the night, or I am not in favour of the proposal. Now, this was then sent out, and the results, or this was the letter that was um, sent out to, suggested letter to all fellows, 1935. Now, the um, results of the survey, well... Here are the results. Um, these fellows were um, in favour. There's some quite good names there. You might recognise some of them. A.E. Houseman, um, Littlewood, um, Wittgenstein. There you go. Um, these are the ones who are against. Um, and 23 in favour, 12 against. And then some no opinion expressed. G.I. Taylor, for instance. Um, G.I. Taylor was quite interesting. He said, quite rightly, I think, G.I. Taylor, I do not think that fellows living out of college ought to express an opinion on this subject. Well, there we go. And um, uh, the ones that didn't reply, well, there's a few there. Um, there's Lord Rutherford, GM Trevelyan. There we go. Anyway, the silencing. The whole point of the silencing is that from midnight, the last thing the clock does at midnight is to strike midnight, then it should be silent until 7.15 in, uh, in the morning. And then it does ding dong. Now, the sequencing of that, this is done by this rather funny mechanism, and it was added on after. The clock is 1910. All of this stuff that you can see outside of the main clock frame is the silencing mechanism, because this was an afterthought. And all of this stuff that you can see here, none of that was there in the original 1910 clock. And what we've got is... A, uh, a cam here, that cam, well, that's that wheel there rotates once in 24 hours. And when the cam gets to this lever, well, that lever, if I push it, pushes this bar along, and that bar pushes this lever, and that lever pushes these things out of the way and what that does is to silence the bells 
uh, from ringing the, from the from the stripe from ringing. So as long as that cam is in pushing that lever, then those are silent. So that's the silencing mechanism for the hours. And the silence mechanisms for the quarters is a slightly different thing. It's got a wheel here with these pins. And these pins lift up this lever. And that lever lifts up this thing here. And that thing there puts a pin preventing this from turning around. So it basically puts a spanner in the works. And that is regulated by this lovely thing called the snail wheel. Now look at this beautiful brass thing, the snail wheel. And now this snail wheel rotates once every um, hour. And this weight here that you can see, this one here, advances the quarter's silencing wheel by one twenty-fourth of a turn every time the snail wheel drops. And the snail wheel is about to drop. We can stand back and we can watch it here. It's going to drop. Um, it drops at about seven minutes past the hour every hour. And it might drop. We're going to stay here for a second. And There we go. So the snail wheel is dropped. And what that did was to lift this up and rotate the silencing mechanism. Now at midnight, that pin, just after midnight, this pin here would have gone in here, it would have lifted this up to silence the bells. And I think this is all so wonderful. It's all just mechanical stuff. And um, the, uh, the quote, for the silencing. Well, once the survey was produced, then there was a letter from, um, from Smith of Derby, uh, who were the manufacturers, with a quote. Here's the quote. Estimates. Estimate number one. Our charge for silencing the quarters will be, our charge for silencing the quarters will be, Thirty-two pounds. The additional charge for silencing the bells will be twenty-five pounds, and an additional charge to clean and thoroughly maintain the clock will be an additional eight pounds uh, and ten shillings. There we go. Um, and that was back in uh, June, nineteen thirty-five. Well, I really ought to go and have a look in the uh, archives of the college and see if I can find some other great stuff. Um, I'd love to find out things going back to 19, to, sorry, going back to 1610, if I can. That's when the first clock was in there. Um, the earliest stuff I can find goes back to um, 17, uh, the earliest photo, not photo, earliest painting goes back to 1739. I've got that here. Let's have a look at that. That's a 1739. That's on the right hand side is what the clock tower looked like back then, 1739. And there on the left is what it more or less looks like today. That's a picture from 1954. And you can see that picture shows the dial. Um, that's in uh, 1954, much as it is today. And, uh, and over here, 1739, well, it looks pretty similar. And uh, in a few details, like the, the belfry up there is a bit different. And, um, but there you go. Nothing much changes in this place. Um, and uh, I want to find out more if I can about what happened before uh, 1739. 1726 was when this uh, the Bentley clock was put in and the only thing we've got from evidence we've got of that particular clock is this plaque here um, but I'd really love to find out more.
about what happened uh, before 1726. So there we are. Uh, Good to uh, be doing these videos. It keeps me out of mischief. And um, we will uh, be meet again next time, next week, when we do the winding of the clock.